Hey guys, Christopher Sarda at Casting Comics on Instagram and Twitter, and today I'm going to continue to complain about uh, licensed properties. No, I liked this one sort of, except it was expensive if you saw the last review. But uh, I also picked up Dragon Age. This is a, another book that is a uh, appears to be an adaption of a video game in comic form. This uh, this was done by IDW. This here um, by Dark Horse, and just to you know, because uh, this is a different video and I'm going to complain about uh, number ones and whatnot, just in case you didn't see the other one, uh, the other video. I am okay with adaptions. Um, I do like the comics for comics sake and people that write comics that are meant to be for our art form, etc. So um, uh, Brian K. Vaughn is like that, for for um, for example. That's why you really don't see a lot of his stuff adapted. I don't think he's against it like Alan Moore. Um, I keep hearing why the last man is optioned and whatnot, but he's not pushing for it. Um, of course, Alan Moore is like that. The um, cartoonist kayfabe dudes seem like that. So there's a few like that, but I am not against uh, an adaption because I think our medium is so good that we can uh, tell stories in a in a, in a more experimental way. The simple fact that a comic book doesn't cost as much as a video game or a movie to make means that there's less risk. So we can, uh, we can churn out stuff. Um, we can, we can, this medium can also, uh, produce a lot of, uh, a lot of books or a lot of story in a short amount of time. Um, so I'm not against adaptions. I like them. But what I don't like is when I pick up something like Dragon Age, which at the time I didn't even realize is a video game. I didn't know that there was a bunch of other adaptions before. I picked it up because it did say number one. Um, but, you know, I got, I got spoofed, essentially, on this. I read this, and I couldn't tell anything that was going on. And if you're going to buy a number one, then I think you should at least be able to enter into the story... Um, without or, and be able to enjoy it and be able to enjoy this arc. So I understand that other stuff might have happened before. So a good writer will be able to work that in to the story so that I know what's going on. Um, and worst case scenario, worst case scenario, and this would have been perfectly fine, you know, a little, uh, a couple paragraphs here telling me the story so far. You know, Marvel gives an entire page to it. So Anything like that would have been helpful because I sat here reading this lost. And when I say a good writer, I'm not um, calling out uh, Nunzio uh, De Filippis or Christina Weir because I think that as far as I could tell, even though I didn't know what was going on, the writing is fine. This is more they're doing work for hire, uh, doing IP that isn't theirs. And they uh, basically the, a lot of the story may have been told, I don't know, and they had to essentially script it. So it's, it's not something I'm pulling out uh, and calling it their fault. I'm calling it Dark Horse's fault. Uh, I'm not going to buy this comic, and I'm not going to recommend anyone buy this comic. I suppose if you're a big Dragon Age fan and you happen to cross over uh, into comic books, you might be buying this and reading this. But um, but uh, I'd tell you that you, you could have opened up the door to someone like me that might enjoy it. But instead, I was uh, really lost. Now, if you take those pieces away, that's why the book got the C or C minus or whatever I gave it. Um, it the book had promise. As I was reading it, you know, before I realized I was going to stay lost, the uh, art was actually very good. Let me give credit to um, Fernando Hines Furukawa and uh, colors by uh, Michael Atiyea. Um, before I realized I was lost, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I mean, it had a feel of um, Battle Chasers from the early 2000s, um, you know, with a lot less, uh, you know, female exploitation and uh, explicit boob showing, which I'm fine with. It was cool. I'm just telling you that's what this is. It had a, that Battle Chasers feel. Um, and uh, although you didn't see much, much technology, I know that was a Battle Chasers thing to sort of mix that. But it did feel like that to me um and, and the artwork was uh real close except you know without the uh misogyny again i'm okay with misogyny it's crazy right <laughs> but uh but in the end i read it and it, it took a whole issue i started getting a feel like of these different characters they're not drawn too differently it was uh it was weird like the parties meeting and separating and who was apart so um it's a big fail by dark horse in my opinion as far as, um, you know, having a number one sitting on a shelf 
uh, essentially at the end of it, I felt tricked because I didn't know what was going on or, or anything that was going on. And I understand that there were some series before this, but that could have been remedied by just giving me a paragraph to, uh, let me know what the story so far, and then I could have maybe put it together. So, um, unfortunately cannot recommend this for the reasons that I said, even though the basics are all checked off, seem like good dialogue, good writing, good art. Uh, and uh, it looked like, which is the reason I picked it up, a fun fantasy story. Um, but I won't be buying number two, so you won't be seeing a review of number two. Thank you guys for watching. This is Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. See you guys later.